Hey, Internet family. So I would love to do an Oracle card review for you guys. This is actually two Oracle decks that I use that I've combined into one. And they're some of my favorites. They're some of my oldest decks that I currently use. One of them is the Goddesses and Sirens deck by Stacey DeMarco and, the, and Jimmy Manton. And the other is the Gods and Titans deck by the same authors. So these I got because a friend of mine in Southern California, I was visiting her one day, we were just having some goddess time with Oracle cards and snacks, and, and she had these beautiful, beautiful mermaid cards. And I loved them. They were so magical and gorgeous, and the images had such life in them. So I went home, I took a picture of the, of the cover, and I went home to maybe see if I would want to order some like that because I could just feel them so strongly. And in looking at what the author did, I also somehow found these cards. And I ordered them. First I ordered the goddesses one, and they were incredible. And so then very soon after that I ordered the gods one and combined them. So this is the back, as you can see. The gold one, these are the goddesses. This is the goddesses deck. And the silver one, this is the gods deck. So we've got the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And I'll just show you guys some of these cards. Like we've got Persephone. Oh, that's funny. We're in the middle of the winter, and who do I pull first? Of course, Persephone and Hades, the lords of the underworld, and things get quiet and dark, and your inner death and rebirth and all that kind of stuff. We've got, let me just flip through here. Here's Nuada. He's a, he's a Celtic king from the Tuatha. Here's from Middle America. And um, from overseas, Asian tradition, sun goddess. And I really love these cards. Here's Helios, classic mythology, sun god. Um, I really love these cards for a few reasons. First, there's just so much life in them. And secondly, they are super sexy. <laughs> I love it. I feel like the, the people in them too, you know, I really feel like for, for something that I like to focus on and also something that I see coming up and up and up in all my work is really owning our power and owning our badassery and looking at these images and being able to, ooh, these are some of my favorites, being able to look at the way they hold that power, look at the way they hold that confidence. I really love what the authors of this deck brought through, both of these decks brought through. And so I use these when I'm looking at the masculine and feminine aspects of a situation. So when I do a grand spread with all these different tarot decks that I have, I, um, I ask for one of each. I say, okay, what's the masculine perspective of this? situation and what's the feminine perspective she's one of my favorites too Hecate also La Lady Liberty you see that symbolism mm -hmm. um, yeah and so I ask what's the feminine perspective both in me and in the people I meet in the situation and what's the masculine perspective both in me and in the people I meet in the situation and I pull one of each of these and let me pull one for you just to give you a little reading get you to feel how these are because another magical thing about the descriptions of these in these little guidebooks, they come with the description, which tells you a little about the deity that you just pulled, which gives you a little ritual to do to connect with them if you wish to do that and call on their certain areas of expertise. I know I've said this before, I don't believe in worshiping things by giving our energy up to it, but I do believe, in oh, these are some of my favorites too. I do believe that looking at who has mastered certain aspects of reality and, and understanding in mythology and in tradition, and I really believe in, um, calling in those energies and asking them for help because archetypes in my experience are very very real they're very very uh, living and so doing this helps me to gain clarity and to call in some things that I do believe are alive I have had direct contact with a bunch of deities over the course of my adult life so I do believe in stuff like this and like I said not giving up power to it but honoring its power and asking for assistance and co-creating cool stuff. That's really what it comes down to. Because I do believe that we are all equally as powerful as anything or anyone. And so gaining more clarity and, and co-creating using skills and using talents and inspiration. Because every big archetype, especially ones that have been around for thousands of years, you know they had to do some crazy stuff during their lifetimes to get there and to go archetypal. And I respect that. So, okay. That said, what is most beneficial for you guys to see whenever you, whenever you watch this video? I would love to know. Be given some clarity. Okay. Ooh, it's a goddess card. Let's see? Let's see who it is. Cool. It makes sense. 
I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this correctly, but Sheila Nagy, I don't think that's necessarily right, but it's okay. She is an incredible goddess, and also she's connected with a lot of ancient astronaut, ancient alien theory. Okay, this makes, oh, and of course the book opens directly to it. This makes sense because at the time of recording this video, it's about to be the new moon, and it's about to be the winter solstice of 2017. So we're definitely going through gateways, definitely going through gateways. So let me read this, this description to you as you notice anything that calls out to you in this card synchronistically. Okay, gateways. A new path opens to you and you are protected. A rite of passage is close. You are about to pass through a new gateway that will change you. Do not be afraid to open up. Sheila Nagig is cheeky, irreverent, and somewhat frightening. She may lead you astray, but she is one of the oldest energies of the Celtic lands. A crone goddess, Sheila Nagig is depicted as a woman showing her genitals and is most likely to appear upon gateways, windows, and doorposts. Although some depictions are a little confrontational at first glance, Sheila's, as the carving are affectionately referred to, are commonplace on sacred buildings throughout Ireland and England. We also have a little ant friend crawling on this book. So there's some symbolism for you there. Isn't it beautiful? Let me put you back on the grass. Yeah, these, these drawings actually look like greys when you see them because this is a beautiful artist rendition, but the drawings are bald head, really big eyes, line drawing. And they are, they're holding open the yoni, which, which represents the gateway of all life. You'll see. see. <laughs> Sheila Nagig is a protectress of gateways with the female genitalia being the primary gateway, that of all life. While there is some conjecture about the full function, magical or otherwise, of the carved shilas, she is generally thought to serve as protection, scaring away evil spirits, or bringing good luck through birth. When you are about to pass through a gateway, such as a graduation, a birthday, a rite of passage, or even a real gateway in a home or school, you may wish to honor Sheila and ask for her protection. This is an old, powerful, magical energy and, as such, is very effective. Her energy is jolly and, yes, a little wild, but always with a positive intent. So, boom, new beginnings for you whenever you're seeing this, whether or not it's now when I'm recording it in December 2017 or long from now. Blessings on whatever it is that you're going through. And so that's a little bit of the energy of the Titans and Gods and the Goddesses and Sirens guidebook. Ooh, I mean, sorry, deck. I was looking at that. Love her, too. Keep those hearth fires burning, y'all. Sending you a lot of love. And also, um, let's see, if you want to work with me on getting to know your Oracle deck, I'm starting up a class very soon. But by the time you see this, there will be a moment open for it, and it will be available on my website. So feel free to do that, or just get to know them yourself. You know, they'll tell you how to use them. You just keep using them and look for, look for what they mean. Look for the, the proof after you use it. That's the thing about intuition. You've got to fact check and learn to discern. And once you do, you will have power that people do not understand. And if you use it with love, kaboom, we can heal this earth quicker than anybody thinks. Truth. Okay, love you guys. Blessings.